Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Wavy Wrap and this is a new wrap available by Yarnspirations using the famous now Karen and Pantone yarn. This is going to be really quite an interesting uh, project. It, it is a really stunning looking wrap and I think that you'll be excited because you will be able to change the sizes of this wrap quite easily. So today we're gonna dive really heavily into this. I'm gonna show you how to do the two motifs that appear, how to put them together and then do the final strip as you see on the model. So there are two motifs, a full motif and a half and there is a difference. The half is the one that you will start with and this is the one that will touch the strip that you'll do at the end. The full motif looks like a clamshell that's somewhat open and then what you have is that that will sink in and you will sew it all together. So because you're sewing all these motifs together you can make it virtually any size that you wish. So let's take a look more at this yarn and let's get further into this project. So the yarn of choice is Karen and Pantone and you can use the color play tool on the link of this more information of this video. You will be able to find that and you'll be able to change the colors of the wrap right on screen and see what colors that suit you. You can also change the order of the colors. So what we have here is that this is kind of the full idea and you will see that these are the colors. So you will see that sometimes there's a repeat of colors. You will need nine braids of this. So it actually is, works out pretty good and you will be using all those pieces in order to do that. And then at the end you just do a seam line straight across and joining them together. I know you're excited to see what those look like in person. Well I've got a couple samples and then we're gonna dive in and I'll show you how to do the full and the half motif. So here are two halves that you see and this is long and you'll crochet a strip after this and this is a full motif that will sink down and just basically work in the spaces in between. So once you sew things together it'll puzzle together really quite beautifully. So you can go as long as you want to go. So if you just want to add another one you can put another one here and then just add another one etc and move your way down. So the amount of that you do is really quite awesome. So you'll notice that this particular pattern does not go into a point that ends up with four motifs that are four full motifs at the end. So the only time you're going to do the half is the right uh, in the start here and then the rest are full. So let's take a look closer at these motifs. So what happens this one goes in a half moon shape. Once you get this done you just go across the bottom of it before you finish and then it creates this nice flat look and then the same one with here is set we finish at the top and then we just work our way down and then back up to create that really cool look. So let's go back to the diagram now. You're going to need a six uh, millimeter size J crochet hook in order to play today and then we're going to begin. So let's start off with the half motif. So you're going to notice these arcing shapes that you see and those represent either a front loop or a back loop. You're going to notice that the one side, the right side has a bit of texture because you are using these loops. So that's what you see going on here. So the other side is more flat based just like you see. So what I want to pay attention to is that the growth always is gonna happen in the middle. I kinda highlighted some areas that I thought were important. For example there's four uh, double crochets that are by themselves here and then it goes, it splits into two and then four and then the two middle ones are all, all there. So when I was doing it uh, for example um, I wasn't paying attention that the two middles have always two in them and if you know that it becomes a little bit faster for you to be able to crochet. I think once you do one of these motifs the second one for me was a lot faster because I understand the pattern so I think you'll be able to pound these out pretty fast. So let's grab your crochet hook and let's grab your Karen and Pantone and let's try. So let's begin. We're gonna start off with a slip knot and we're going to begin with it on the hook. To begin the half motif you're going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So let's begin row number one. So row number one we're gonna start with second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. And I want you to single crochet that one plus single crochet the next one. The next two in a row that's the middle. So there's gonna be two single crochets in each of those. So one and two and it's gonna cause it to bend and you're gonna do the next one. Put two into that one as well. This is the very middle of your half motif. And then finally the last two chains that are left will be each one single crochet one and two. That was row number one. So you're gonna leave it. It's gonna arch but in the end you'll see how we're gonna flatten that out. Turn your work and let's do row number two. In row number two we are gonna make it nice and simple. You're gonna chain two. 
Usually it's always chain three when it comes to double crochet but in this pattern it doesn't and it makes sense and it, it sits right so I'm not even concerned about it. So this one here you're gonna go into a regular stitch right into the next one and you are going to place in two double crochets in each stitch all the way to the other side except for the very last turning chain you're going to put only one uh, double crochet into that one at the end. Okay so two into each and then one into the final. So this is the second last one and you may wanna double count just to make sure that you have the amount of do uh, two double crochets in the in the stitches and then the very final one is just one double crochet by itself. And then that's it. That is row number two. You're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number three. So let's begin row number three. We're going to start introducing the front loops at this point to keep the texture on the back side of it. So when you turn it around it will be there. So when if you're not new, if you're new to crochet then there are two strands that make up a stitch. The strand closest to you is the front loop and the strand away from you is the back loop. So let's begin. We're going to chain up two which counts as the double crochet in this case which is unusual I know but just stick with it and you're gonna go in the front loop only of the same stitch and just do a double crochet. The next one will be, they're all gonna be in the front loop so assume that. So the next one is gonna be one by itself so one double crochet and then the next one has two double crochets into the front loop. And then the next one is one by itself. And then the next one has two. Okay. And now the next one has one by itself. And now you're towards the middle of the project. So the next two that you will have will each be two double crochets each into the front loop. So that's the very middle that I highlighted on the diagram. And now you just come down the other side. So it's gonna be one by itself and then two into the next. One by itself, two into the next. Okay, one by itself and then the very last one which is that chain two down here in the front loop only you're going to apply two double crochets. This one I find is a little bit tough but once you get into it it's awesome and you're gonna put two double crochets right into the very end and that was round uh, row number three. So you got one more row to go. See the texture is right here and we're going to begin number four. So let's begin number four. We're gonna work on the back loop so it's going to be in the one that's furthest away from you. So the first one is the front loop and the one away from you is the back loop. Let's begin. Chain two counts as a double crochet and now for the next four in a row there will each be one double crochet in the back loop each. So one, two, three, and four and then the next one has two in it. So one and two and now the next four in a row are each one double crochet. So one, two, three, and four. Now you're in the middle so the next two in a row are each two double crochets. So one and two and then move to the next one one and two and now we begin going down the other side. So the next four in a row will each be a double crochet. So one, two, three and four. The next one has two in it. So one and two and now the next four, uh, five, the remaining five sorry is going to be, so there's four and then the final. So the next five are each a double. So one, two, three, four 
and the turning chain is your fifth. And that was row number four. So this is what it looks like right now and the texture is in the front side. So what we're going to do is turn our work upside down and work our way across the base. But I'm gonna take you back to the diagram first. So what I want to do is that I want to then continue and work my way along this side. It's actually really quite easy when you think about it. So um, the way that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it upside down for you and you'll see it. So now that it's upside down, it's very easy to work your way across. You're gonna put chain one and then two singles around this post, two singles around that post, two singles around that post, so there's a six. Then there's six stitches left in here. So you're gonna put, start off with two in a row for singles, two halves in the next, sorry, one half in the next two, and then two single crochets in a row, and then you jump to this side. So two, two, and two, chain one, and slip stitch, and you're done. So let's begin to do the final as you're completing the half motif. So let's work our way. So when we do this, we're gonna be filling in this spot. So we're gonna chain up one and around this post, I want you to put in two singles. So one and two and then go around the next post that you see. Just see how you can follow it up. Around this post, you're gonna put in two, basically two in each. And then the next one is gonna be two and then you're in the middle section. So the first two that you start with, just start right on the other side of that chain. So you're gonna, the first two is gonna be a single. The next two, which is the deepest spot of that, is going to be a half double each. And then the final two of those are gonna be one single in each. And then you're back on the side of the post so in the side of the post, it's gonna be two. Okay, and I'm bearing in ends when I can to get rid of them, to hide them really well. So there's two in that one. And then there's gonna be two into the final post here, just separate it with your fingertips. And before you're done, chain one and slip stitch just not to the space but actually to the actual chain work itself and that'll stabilize it and then you're done. So you're officially done. You can see that it filled in. So when you get this part done, just trim a little bit, just long enough to get it onto a, a tapestry needle. If you try, if you tie it way too long, you're just gonna have waste. So just get it long enough to hide this in and using a tapestry needle, just feed it through the eye of the needle and any loose ends that you may have, just clean them up so I got one there and just drag it back through and favor the back side. So favor the side that is the underside of your wrap. So pull through, do not warp it though and then go back in the other direction. There's two and then finally in the third direction. So you can see how much that I ended up left. So next time I probably just trim it a little bit shorter. So now I'm just going to trim this right down. I hid this one as I went so I can get rid of that and therefore this is the half motif and then it's ready to join its friends. So that's the half. So we're now going to move on to the full motif. So the, we just did half so these ones sink in between and then they just rest and then the next uh, half then will appear here and the way that you do it and so it, it makes it really quite complete. So we're gonna move on to the full motif. Let's go back to the diagram. Let's take a quick look and then we're gonna continue. So back to the diagram, we're gonna start off in the very center right here. So we're gonna chain three and then chain two which counts as a double crochet and we're gonna just build it out. It actually builds it really quite quickly. So what's gonna happen is that we wanna pay attention to the growth spurts, what you're gonna, what we're gonna be doing. Basically the growth is very similar to the half that we just did. The only difference is that the seam line is slightly different over here. We're gonna get all the way into row number, row, row number four and then we're gonna just come back across here. Again, very straightforward and how you came back across in the other one. Just gotta make sure you chain your two when you get down to the point here and then you just apply your single crochets all the way back up. So you think you got it? Let's try to do a full motif next. So let's just create a slip knot to begin. Six millimeter size J. We haven't changed our hook. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and put the crochet hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through and through and you have the very start center ring of your motif. 
we're gonna continue along. I don't need a break. So we're gonna chain up two which counts as a double crochet and then in the center of that ring I want you to apply three more double crochets. I want to put that straggler over top so it gets stuck underneath the stitch work. So this is one of three, two of three, and three. So with the chaining of two and the other three that gives you a total of four. We're gonna keep on going. I don't need a break. Okay, we just finished up row number one. Let's turn to row number two. Row number two, chain two counts as a double crochet in this case and the next two in a row will each be a double crochet. You're not gonna worry about the front or the back loops at all. Not yet in this pattern. So the two in a row are each two double crochet and then there will be one double crochet in the turning chain. That was row number two. Turn your work and let's do number three. So chain up two counts as a double crochet. The first one is gonna be one double crochet by itself and then the next two in a row are each two double crochet. So one and two and one and two and then you're on the other side so there's gonna be one by itself and then the final in the turning chain will be one double crochet. That was row number three. Let's turn our work and do row number four. Row number four, you're gonna chain two, counts as a double crochet and the first stitch. Each one of these are going to be two double crochets each except for the very final that'll be just one. So put two double crochets in each of these stitches. and then the final turning chain will get one double crochet. That was row number three. Row number four, we're going to turn our work. Okay and that was row number four. So let's turn our work and begin row number five. Let's start row number five. We're now going to be working on the front loops only. So we're gonna chain up two, counts as a double crochet and in the same one it's going to be a front loop, double crochet. So the next one is, they're all gonna be front loops. So the next one's one double crochet by itself and then the next one has two double crochets. The next one has one and the next one has two. Next one has one. And so there's three groupings of these two double crochets in and on each side. So you have one, two, and three. So that means that these two middle ones are each two double crochets each. So that's the growth in the middle. And then you work down the other side. So the next one is one into the next, two into the next one, one into the next one and then two, one into the next and then the final turning chain will get two in there. So that one's a, it's like the half motif. You may have a little bit of hard time to get into it. Myself not so much today. So that was row number five. So now you're gonna turn your work and do the remaining then, the final one, number six. Chain up two counts as a double crochet and the next four in a row and these will be in the back loop only. So coming to the back loop, just put four in a row of double crochet. So one, two, three, and four and then two into the next. And then the next four, so one, two, three, 
two, three, and four. Okay, and now you're at the middle, so the next two in a row will each be two double crochets. So one and two, move to the next one, two into that one, so one and two, and then start, start moving down the other side. So four in a row by itself. So one, two, three, So it's four. Okay, and now the next one has two. And then the remaining five. So there's four plus the last one. So the remaining five have one double crochet each. So one, two, three, four. And then the turning chain is five. But you're not done. Do not fasten off. And this is what it looks like and we still have to come down through the vise and then back up the other side. So we're now gonna start and we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna put two single crochets in each one of these posts all the way. So there's two, 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 two. And then you're gonna come all the way down to the end. So you'll be in the center ring just like you see. You'll put one in, in each. So one and then chain two, one and then start up your two, two, twos all the way back. Chain one and slip stitch. Let's begin the final pass across. So let's begin to go your final. So chain up one and in the side post just put in two singles. So one and two. Go into the next post just separate it out and just put two into that one. So one and two. Next one, one and two. Next one, one and two. Okay, this is the last one before you hit the ring. So one and two. And right where you did the center ring, I want you to put in one single crochet first, chain two, and then into the same center, another single. Now start working down the other side of the post. So there's gonna be two in the first one. Okay, two into the next and so on and keep working your way to the other side. Okay, this is the last post so you're gonna put two in there, chain one and then slip stitch to the top of this chain and that will help stabilize it and the, for you're good to go. So you're now done. So you're gonna take this yarn. Don't be too crazy about the amount of yarn that you trim as far as being too long. Just get it long enough so that you can get it into a tapestry needle and just throw it into a needle. And I want you to favor the back side of this. So this you're looking at the good side. You see the ridges. The other side is more flat. Just drag your yarn through the back side drag it through once. Don't let it warp. Go back the second time. If you're gonna do this project spend the time to do this right at this moment because uh, you'll be thanking yourself later. This is really quite an exquisite wrap. Then go back to the center. If you buried it like I showed you just get rid of it and therefore that is your full motif. And so now you're just gonna make your sets of them in the colors that you need. So now we have to put things together and there's a diagram but let's just lay it out. So say I did the whole thing. You're gonna wanna wait to the end in order to do it. I guess you could do it as you go but it's better to get a, a good uh, shot across all the way with one particular um, strand. You're then going to then start piling these up and then the only the one has the halves and then everything else has the fulls and then you start working them together and when you sew them together it'll uh, bunch and push into position. So we're gonna do that and you just gotta either choose the, this yarn or this yarn. We're gonna use an invisible joint to join these and we wanna pay attention to where we join them because how they come together makes a lot of sense and then you'll see it nicely sit and then we'll turn it over and then do the back um, seam that joins them all together here at the base. So let's uh, begin to sew these together first because that's our first thing that we need to do. So let's start putting these together. The first side you want to put into your tapestry needle. The other side I'm gonna have you create a slip knot and 
I always do that on my stuff because I get paranoid things are gonna fall apart. But I wanna leave a long enough strand so I can throw a tapestry needle through that so I can hide it accurately at the end. So what I wanna pay attention to is on the one side here we have the two double crochet sets that are at the top. So we're gonna start off on the one side. Okay, so the my motif is over here. So I'm gonna start off in the first one and I'm only gonna go into the, the back loop only. And then I'm going to start off in the first one here and I'm only gonna go in the back loop of that one. So it's the, so there's only one strand I'm going into each. And I'm just gonna pull this through and then I'm gonna slow down as I get to that slip knot and throw that through and that'll lock it into position. And what I'm gonna do is that normally I would take this strand and keep on bearing it but I'm gonna put it to the other side and I'll deal with it later. So I'm gonna move down the one and move down on the next stitch on the other side and just go across. So this is called whip stitching. So when you go in the back loop only it creates what is called as an invisible join. It's really well hidden to do this and you wanna use one color or the other to do your joining to really kinda get it to match really well. And so you're just gonna match your stitches going down to the center. And when I say center I mean to the, the point here and what I'm gonna do is I'll be right back and I'm just gonna keep on going and I'll see you there in just a moment. So you'll have to do the same thing. So I'm now in the chaining of two, remember at the base. So now what I'm gonna do is introduce the next one. So coming starting at the very base of this one here. Again staying in the one stitch only, the one uh, uh, um, strand, it's the back loop. And it'd be better if I had my yarn already on my, <laughs> on my needle. So let's just put that back on. This is a, a merino yarn mix so it's got a really quite beautiful um, stitch definition when you use this yarn. And the colors because it's Pantone related are very vibrant and awesome. So we're now just going to come back up the other side of the next motif just joining them. And my goal is is that when I get to the middle section of this one here I'm looking for where the two are sitting. So the very final uh, second one of the first group will be the final of this one as I join it. And you can see it's turning out really quite lovely. So let's continue then to whip stitch our way up this motif and then we'll join another one when we get there. So I'm in the second one of the two. So it's so I'm in the uh, last stitch. So I'm in the first group but the second one and this is the final one that will join this one and then I'm gonna jump to the next one. So coming back into this motif and then I wanna join the next one up with it and starting at the end again going across. Just pull things, this is a beautiful join. It's actually turning out really quite lovely and uh, I keep saying that but it's awesome. And I'm just gonna work my way back down to the bottom side. So I'm in the very base and I'm in the chain two and now I'm gonna add my next one up and going into the back loop only and then back to the this motif here. Okay, so this is how you're going to join your ideas. So you can see if this is a smaller version you can just see it's kind of like uh, stacking up. So you fill in more and etc. So this is kind of a really neat idea. Let me just get to the end of this and then we're going to then start our strip across the base that brings everything together for a visual look. When you get to the final one it'll be the first group of the two and it's the last one and this is the final. So when you're satisfied and got all the way across obviously it'll be wider for you except for if you're on the top edges of course that I want you to just put the needle through the back side to bring it to the back. Do not warp your project so don't yank on it. So stay towards the back side of your project and I want you to go in and out of the stitch work on the back. You should not see this needle on the front side at all. So just go through once. Just be firm about it but not uh, crazy about it and then go through two and then three. That's it. So that would be how you would attach things together. So now we gotta concentrate on the strip that is in the base 
that brings everything alignment together. So let's just do that next and let's begin. So this has a strip that it consists of four rows and there we're going to go across the first time just to evenly space it and then we're just gonna zip across three more times in order to bring it nice and solid. So you have to choose a nice color that you have left in your braids. So in my case I'm gonna go with this green. You're gonna create a slip knot to begin and you're just going to join to the very far stitch. So notice that it's a regular stitch, it's not a back loop. Doesn't say to do that so just join it. Chain one in one single crochet in each of the stitches that you can find. Now you should be able to find them because you went across the bases of these half motifs. So just evenly spacing in, uh, uh, when you get to the center. So just dropping down and I will see you there in just a moment. So just work your way to a join and I'll see you there. So I'm coming where the two join I'm just equally spacing and just jump down and just go right into the, the section. And if you wanna make it more look even just do it, just pull up and give a little more slack and then just keep on moving down. It's called an extended um, single crochet when you do that. So you just kinda pull up a little bit of a bigger loop than normal and then you just keep moving across and I want you to do that every time you hit that and then I'll see you at the end of this row and we'll turn around. So I'm just coming up to the very end of there. Obviously yours will be bigger. I'm just doing a small mini sample today. So you're just gonna turn your work and then work your way back across. So just chain up one and one single crochet in each and you're gonna do three more rows of this. So this row plus two more and then you're done. So I'm gonna leave that with you. This is uh, I believe it would be an intermediate level. I haven't really checked that yet. Yes it is. And uh, so you should be able to finish this on your own. So just do your single crochets and that's it and I will see you at the end of getting this done. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So this is it. I got my four rows done. It's all joined together beautifully. Obviously yours will be a lot bigger. I would be inclined to steam block this if I were you or damp block it just with a damp uh, cloth just to, 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 to and let it uh, air dry and it will be awesome and it will look great. So that's the back side and the front side. Either side looks great but the front side with the texture looks amazing. So this is how you do the wavy, uh, what is this one called? The wavy wrap and this is another free pattern available with Yarn Inspirations featuring Karen and Pantone. It's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crab. We'll see you again real soon I hope. Bye bye.